so here is what I hope is a more interesting example. We still have our original basis vectors, and we still have that one vector we were working with, except I extended it out to 2, 2 out here. But there we have it, our original vector. And then I've added other vectors. Right? And you can see here we have sliders, and I can adjust the various vector values. Let's put that back to a 3. And we also have our basis, or our matrix that we're going to use to do our transformation right here. And so this is our first basis vector and our second basis vector. So what you're seeing here is, for example, let's see, which one of these is straight up in the Y? It'd be this one. This one is 0, 3. So this is 0 times the X basis vector plus 3. That was kind of a weird 3, but 3 times our second basis vector. So three of these would be give me one, and then two, and then three, and that gives me our, or that gives us, that produces this result here. Okay, so kind of interesting. And you can see the result here is zero, three. I have the result, so it's like we take the value of this slider and, and put it here, and the value of this slider, put it here, multiply, add, and that gives us this resulting vector here and same thing here resulting vector so two times two right here two and then two a two here two times that plus two times that gives us this and so on and so forth for the rest of these okay so again I'm I'm gonna, gonna do some linear transformations I'm going to take this I'm going to scale first in the X well what's what's going to happen to all of our vectors if I grab this and scale it in the X. Pause the video, think about it, work it out on paper. Um, that's the best way to do it is, is get your hands on this stuff and toy around with it. But um, let me grab this and I'm going to scale it here. Let's bring it up to 2. You notice, actually, let me do that with the arrow keys. You can see the effect as I do it with the arrow keys and a little slower here. But as I bring that out to 2, then we're essentially scaling on the X. We're stretching our X basis vector and and notice here all the vectors that had a part of this or used a part of this vector stretched as well and these are negative so we have the negative 2 negative 2 here so if I take this vector and I times it by a negative 2 that's going to give me negative 1 negative 2 and so that accentuates the X stretch so to say or the X scaling and of course, I can do the same thing with the Y here. I can bring this up to 2. And so I've essentially, well, pretty much everything's off the screen now for you, but we've we've doubled the size of our our vectors here. Now let me let me reset this back all to 0. Or not 0, back to, but back to 1. And, and if you notice the shape I've kind of made, if I, if I removed these arrows here and I just pretended these were positions out in space. So here's a position, and here's a position, and here's a position, and so on and so forth. I can connect these dots and make a shape out of this. And the shape is not too dramatic, but it is kind of interesting. If I connect the dots like that, and connect the dots like that, and connect the dots like that, we have a house. Okay? So there's a house. And that's the idea is, when we're doing linear transformations, especially in games, we can think of these as vertices, is what we call these dots, ver vertices in the game. Or what's really happening mathematically is that they're vectors, and, and so the vertice position is just this is just a displacement from the origin. No notice all my vectors I've kept at the origin here. And that's when we're doing linear transformations, that's something that keeps solid in your head is that it transforms the vector with respect to the origin. And so it's critical that I have all these vector tails meet at the origin because that's what linear transformations do. Okay, so in games, yes, that's quite common. We connect the dots and and there we go. But let me clear this off. In the end, what we're really dealing with though is vectors and so that's why I'm using these vectors. Now, so I showed you scaling, both in the X and in the Y. Let's do a rotation example that we did in the last video. Remember, all we had to do was change all these values to 0.7, except we needed to go negative here on this basis vector. So let's do that. And watch as I move the arrow keys. Just watch what happens to our basis vectors, and also watch the resulting vectors, what changes there as well. So let's go to 0.7, 
and we're going to go up to 0.7. You see how we're almost, it's almost rotating there. Okay, you see that rotation? And notice this vector is not changing because this vector is 0 times the basis vector that I'm messing around with right now. This vector, this basis vector here contributes nothing to this resulting vector. So I can change these sliders all day long. It's not going to affect this middle vector. All right, let's go. Let's go to point 0.7, and then let's go negative point 0.7. You see the rotation? You see it kind of taking shape there? Let's bring that down to point 0.7. There you go. Look, our house, our house is rotated. All right, let me go to the effort of connecting the vertices or the ends of these vectors again, what best I can, with straight lines. Here, and bring it down. We need to connect these two top ones and bring this down. And there you go. There's our house. We rotated our house. It's that simple. Right? In game programming, we do rotate. We do translate, which is a move. We do all these, all these various transformations. And what it means is change the basis vectors up, and the resulting vectors will change as well. So there you go. A more interesting example. I just rotated an entire house. And in game, especially 3D game, we'll rotate an entire model with thousands of vertices on them and position it into the world.